It's an honor to hear Jeff say that because that's my baby brother. And usually, you know, why Jesus said a prophet is not without honor except in your own home. You know, your own home is accepted. That's my big sister right back there with the white Muslim thing on the head. Stop it. And my son is here. And you know, it's, it's when you have your family on you, it's, it's big. That's, that's huge to me. I don't, I don't take that light. Um, I don't take, I take that to my heart that my son is, even as a teenage age and coming into a young man, he still wants to sit on his father's council. Um, it's time that he get together with my grandsons and um, they want to go out. They say, you want to go out and get something you want to come? And they want me to hang with them and, and cut a food with them. And, and I, it's such an honor to me. You know, I, that blessing, my, that my, my, my generation want me to hang out with them. Amen. You know, so I don't take this stuff like I take this stuff very much to heart. So, because he opened by saying that I sit in front of the throne more than anybody, I just want to qualify that. Because I don't want you thinking that I can be praying and praying on this day. Walks around the street praying, driving with his eyes closed, using the horse. You know, you know <laughs> It's not that deep, you know, because I don't want people to be scared by that. Amen. How many of you have a good friend that you talk to regularly? Amen. Do it. Let me see. Put your hands up. You have a friend. How complicated is it to have that conversation? Nah. Do you do a lot of preparation and you know, <laughs> a whole bunch of junk and I walk on to make sure my heart is right? <laughs> Let's do this. No, you just pick up the phone and you call. And you don't, if that friend is a real friend, you don't even try to prepare your conversation. Well, I gotta watch it. You know, some people think you call them friends, but you gotta walk on the eggshells, everything you say to them. Yeah. That's not a friend. No, it's not. That's not a friend. They're associated, and usually you're their friend and they're not yours. Mm. That's true. There's a lot of people that become your friends because the value you bring to them. They have no intention of returning anything to you. Or may not have no intention, don't know how to. A real friend, I can talk to you, you can talk to me, and we can put it out there, and even if it comes out wrong, you know my heart. I know your heart. It sounded to me like you were saying, no, I wasn't saying that. What I was trying to say, yeah, but it sounded to me. But I was trying to say, okay, do you need to question that friendship? Because a real friend would say, I don't like the way that sounded. And you can say, no, that's not what I meant. And they'll go, yeah, I can see that. Now, my son is 24. Me and my son had a conversation. We'll go to the details about it a few weeks ago. And it got heated. You know, he, 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 he put on his man chest and he got up. <laughs> and that's not like, coming back at me with stuff. And I took it to heart. I was hurt by what he was saying out of his mouth. Like, yo, how could you say that about me? I'm father of the freaking year. Like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I it over my way. I possibly say this. <laughs> and, and I was just like, oh, I'm mortified. <laughs> and he said, so, you know, you just take it all to another place. That's not what I'm trying to say. You're not listening to me. So I pulled back and said, yeah, but you said this. And I thought, you know, my memory, you know, I start laying out the sentences. This is what, yeah, that's, that's where you take it. And then he explained himself. And I was like, I get that. That makes sense. I get that. And then he sent me a text later to let me know. In simple terms, he said, uh, let's see if I get this right. I'm Obi-Wan. He's Luke, he's in training. Every now and then he got to pull out his sword <laughs> to make sure his battle skills are up. <laughs> <laughs> and that made sense to me, like, yeah, because that's my nature. You can't just tell me to tell me it. And some of you, I know I get on people's nerves, I know, especially Lindsay sometimes, sometimes I, when I challenge every <laughs> sentence because I'm saying, 
what are you saying? Well, I said, to, no, you said this in context with this. So my my perception, and I'm not usually mad, but I am making you check, like, listen to what you're saying, because this is what other people will hear. Right, right, right. Everybody's not going to judge your art because they don't know it, nor do they care to know it. They're just going to hear your words. And once words are out, you can't take them back. That's true. One of the most beautiful tactics used in courtroom. You ever watch courtroom dramas? Yeah. And, 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 and either the defense or the prosecution, they will come up and say, he did it, he did it, and they'll say, objection. And he knows they're going to say sustain. And then the judge will look at the jury and say, strike that from the record. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> they heard that. It's not going to strike from nowhere. It's going to be in the deliberation. Somewhere, even if they're not allowed to say, somebody will bring us and say, no, we want to strike that. Okay, we're going to strike it. But I heard that. You can't take it back. I heard it. So when I talk to God, I go to God as a friend. I don't go to God trying to paint it white before I get there. It's not about me being on my knees and laying on the floor with my hands in the air in a prostrate position, playing and praying in a way that irritates everybody else in the house. <laughs> you know, people say, people don't like me because I'm a Christian. Sometimes they don't like me because you're an idiot. Sometimes it's just an idiot. It has nothing to do with Christianity, it's just an idiot. <laughs> Can I have a real conversation here? <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you don't have to be all loud on the train, oh, I'm in Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You know, to have a relationship with Jesus. If you have a relationship with Jesus, when I'm having a conversation with my friends, I don't want anybody else privy to it. It's our conversation. Amen. I don't want anybody all up in our business. This is this is private talk. Right. When I have a real relationship with God, my relationship with God is like that. I don't need to put on a show for people and dance around and walk around the stone face looking at all just because I'm person. You know, that, that, you know that's, that's, that's not real. That's, that's childish. A real relationship is genuine. You don't go before God with a sense of shame. You don't go before friends. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes, you are. You don't go before friends with a sense of shame. You feel like you can come naked. You can come, not literally, hopefully. Come back. You know, you can come real, yes? Yes. My relationship with God, as my book was describing, is that. It's real. It, I don't have to do preparation. I just text him. I know he's going to call me back. Yeah. Amen. He's never so engrossed in any meeting that he won't stop and talk to me. Yeah. He doesn't find a way to make it work for me. He's already working it out for me before I call. Amen. Amen. And when we're wrong, all he asks for us to do is repent. And he just gets right in there and makes it straight. Right. Hallelujah. Repent is not, I'm sorry. Repent is, I'm going to turn from that. I'm not doing that anymore. Right. Amen. Amen. And he gets right in there like you never did anything wrong, and he makes it right. Amen. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is. And as the best friend you could ever have, he would never throw up yesterday in your face. Amen. 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 You could keep bringing up God. I don't know what's wrong with you. Everybody's trying to talk about all that. That's your own guilt, and you do that on your own time. So now, as we go forward to finalize this message, hopefully, today, um, I think I have other stuff to move on to, but it's not part of my business. I got to go with the way God tells me to go. We've been wrapping up this art of seduction, and I want to get to a real important core of seduction. We went through how the enemy appears as a roaring lion, and the roaring lion was not somebody to kill you. But as we went through the Greek, we saw that the lion was him representing himself as the Christ, the Savior, the Deliverer. And then we looked up the word, seeking whom we made devour, and discovered that the word devour was seduce. So Satan's art to destroy you is not to jump out with, with teeth and claws and rip you and shred you, but to seduce you into a place of trusting him as the lion. The protector, the deliverer. The 
word that spoke to Ron was so strong was the word be sober. Used to be your last name. Yeah. <laughs> and and we looked up the word sober, and it's still yours. <laughs> and, and we looked that up and we saw the word sober was what? Dispassionate. Dispassionate emotionally detached. Um, he said the, the way to be sober is not to be emotionally caught up in things. To be dispassionate, to disconnect yourself. Now, I had a real conversation with God all this week about that. Because he stopped showing me in all situations or things would come up in my mind or something that somebody did or said that upset me or didn't sit right with me. And you know, you start to feel that stuff rise up. You know what I should have said? You know? And, and I would say out loud, I need to be dispassionate. I need to be disconnected emotionally from this. And as I was dealing with that, God begins to ask questions. Well, in your relationship with your wife, in the good areas, and I would say 99% of it is good at this point. I would say that. Amen. I would say that. Amen. We're around each other almost 24 hours a day, and I, I never get tired. I would say that. I would say that. I would say that. It took years to get there. <laughs> you know, we've been together almost 40 years. It took years to get there, but. You know, I say the past five years have been something extraordinary. Amen. 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 Now, I said, God, how can I be emotionally disconnected or dispassionate in a relationship? Hmm. That's usually a bad thing. People say, he's emotionally disconnected. Women say that about their husbands a lot. <laughs> he's emotionally disconnected. He doesn't, he doesn't relate. To what I'm going through. So I said, <laughs> people that I've so I said, how does that work in everyday life? Mm. You see, that's a good question, right? Mm. You know, you with your kids, aren't you supposed to be passionate? And God said, passion and emotion is what you use because you don't understand how to operate in the spirit. Oh. I'm about to mess you up a little bit. Whoa. If you want to hear it, say bring it. Bring it. Bring it on. Let me tell you why that made perfect sense. Here's what came to my spirit. That same child you love and kiss and you know my baby, oh, I just love you with all the passion in me. Don't they eventually get to an age and you think you say, me, I just want to kill. <laughs> that same passion <laughs> went from I love you, I I just want to kill you. <laughs> So then passion is a problem because it flips. But if I love you as Christ loved the church, it's consistent. It doesn't flip to the left or the right based on circumstance or situation. Emotions don't bring me up or bring me down. I'm a consistent kill. Oh, see, people get quiet when you talk like that. So we've learned to relate by passion, but it's not the higher road. It's just what we have. I can be driving down the road singing praise to the Lord with all the passion in my heart, hearing great tears going on, and somebody cut me off and the middle finger just went up. I didn't get there. A bad word came out. Where did that come from? I was just having a good time in the spirit. No, I was caught up in good emotion. What's that, Chief? I'm sort of a good emotion and something happened real quick to turn that good emotion back. If I'm helping you wave a hand and say, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> so I'm learning that at this stage of my life, that passion is not the sense that I'm to be ruled by. I'm not supposed to love my wife with earthly passion, but the spiritual passion of the Lord. That's the only way I can see her through the eyes of God, even when she's doing things that don't sit right with me. Oh, okay, okay. Amen. Amen. So what is seduction? Well, seduction is the art of teaching you that this is better than what God said. Woo! Okay. This is easier than what God said. Well, it is easier if that's the way you know. Right. Anybody here ever tried to learn a second language? Was it hard? Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> but you learn English? Right. <laughs> True. Was that hard? No. You don't even remember. I don't remember. Because you had nothing else. Right. So that made sense. It was regular. It was normal. The second language is different because it forces you to surrender the first one. That's true. Wow. That's true. Wow. That's true. So now you say, what's that case? Okay, so how do you say table in Spanish? You know, I'm learning Spanish now, I'm, and I'm all into the how do you say. Where when I was a kid, it wasn't how do you say this for this, it was how, what is that? And you said it and I accepted it because that was all I had. Right. 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 I'm speaking to you right now. Yeah. The things of the spirit, it's like a foreign language because you learn the function in the emotion. Mm -hmm. You learn to express love. Some guys that, you know, I've had it said to me by many wives. You know, every time you know, I'm trying to get him to express emotion, he, he thinks I want to have sex. I just want to hug. Quiet. <laughs> Sister didn't want to say amen. <laughs> you know, I, I just want to spend some time. I don't anything. Any time I reach out, it's not sexual. And I'm like, I understand that. I've been around. Me and my wife had the conversation enough times that I, I get that. Mm -hmm. But that's the only way they know how to relate to affection. So that's how they relate. Right. Now, to teach you, do I want to say this story? To teach him now that I want attention without it being sexual means to the guy I'm not getting her. You know what I'm That's what it means. It doesn't mean, no, I, I don't mind that, but I want this too. Everybody sitting there like this. <laughs> okay, I'll get off the subject. But the women can say amen a little bit. It's it's asking you to bring something to the table that's not normal for you. Right. Yes? What seduction does is try to convince you that that thing is hard and it's easier to work with the way that doesn't work for you. So people will keep doing the thing that they hate to do because they don't believe anything else will work. People will stay on a job forever that they hate because they don't believe that they can get anything else, especially at this age of my life. You know, th that's seduction. See, we think seduction is always robbing and stealing and and, and doing the nasty. No, seduction sometimes is just the fear to be everything God has called you to be. Amen. 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 Just to not excel to your full potential. Wow. What if you fail? We talked about last week that how the world has substitute fear for blessing by saying, don't say that, you might change yourself. Don't speak good over yourself. Mm. It's bad to speak good over yourself. No, don't say good stuff. And we talked about the term break a leg before you go on stage. Why would you tell somebody to break a leg? Because they believe by saying something bad that they're going to have a good shot. It's a deception. Now, we're going to get to um, the song in a minute, but I just want to talk one more thing as we go forward. Are you getting a good foundation for stars? Yes. Everything that has a strong appeal to the senses has the strong ability to be a danger. Do I need to say that again? Yes. Anything that has a strong appeal to the senses has the strong ability to be a danger. Because anything that could move you, the Bible tells you to be careful of people that are always complimenting you. Be watchful for them. Be, be wary of people that compliment you all the time. We don't be wary of those people. We love those people. Those people we want around all the time. We need to be wary of them. 
Because, are you listening to me? Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Because that person continually compliments you, sets you up to depend on their compliment. Right. right. Your emotions are being staged and built on you hearing a compliment from them. Mm -hmm. So here's how seduction happens in the workplace. Oh, for one way, for, in one way. You and your spouse have been together a while, you don't do the compliment thing anymore. If a man keeps coming to you even after he's been with you all these years saying, how do I look? Women, please answer this question. Because <laughs> if you don't, some chick on the job won't tell him you look good. Mm. And then he's going to start dressing for her. Mm. Maybe unintentionally, but he'll start dressing for her because he's looking for that compliment. And seduction usually starts with compliments. Wow. And the same, God said to me one time, compliments and insults spew from the same tree. Same person that bigs you up the day will strip you down tomorrow. And you know, if you've been around, lived, lived longer than 15 years, you know what I'm saying is true. Mm -hmm. That same person that you thought spoke so highly of you, then you found out that they're talking crap about you and everybody else. That's why I'm an equal opportunity person. If you come to me, I'll speak the same <laughs> crap about you in your face. I spoke behind your back. It doesn't matter. Love you or hate me, it's all good. I have a rule. Don't ask me a question if you don't want an answer. <laughs> and my answer might not be 100% be right, but it'll be right to me. It'll be a true answer in my mind. Right, right. Now, if I realize later that wasn't the best answer, I'll come back and tell you, okay, I was wrong. That was not the right answer. But at the moment, I'm a, you're going to get what it is. Now, seduction doesn't do that. Seduction tells you what you want to hear. Mm. Seduction finds out what you want and then makes a great attempt to deliver it. Now, understand. He said, for the, and the, the devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And we looked it up. I'm not doing it again. Go back and get the messages. Or go online. They're free. Don't worry about it. And we should have podcasts up this week so you can go online and download them. So we find, we find out the last king last night. So I think in the coming weeks you should be able to go online, click and download it right to your iTunes, iPhone, whatever, and listen to it at your leisure. Yeah. And the people yeah. said, Amen. Yeah. 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 Now, because, to, because the word translated in English, devour, is the word seduce, we need to be very mindful of our surroundings consistently. What seduces me? By a show of hands, do you know what seduces you? I'm not going to ask you what it is, but do you know? Say, yeah, I know where my weakness is. I know where I can go. I know the thing that catches me. You, so, okay, so you got people who know, and then you got people who just don't know. I don't, I don't have no idea. It just walks up on me, I suppose. I don't know. But it's good that you know, because you don't know what your weaknesses are. You don't know what to stay away from. Right. right. You want to know? Okay, let me give it to you another way, because God said they didn't answer because they don't really get the question. So let me, let me ask another way. Do you know what that phrase is that somebody says that just pisses you off and you know it's going on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, now I got to react. Okay, you know, if you say this, it's going down. <laughs> right? And, and there's that person in your life that knows whenever the argument gets deep, they're going for that phrase. And you still, after 10 years, still respond to it like a jerk. <laughs> you haven't figured out yet that maybe I need to not respond to that like that anymore. That's seduction. It finds a weakness and it exploits it. If you're insecure, it does one or two things. It finds people to keep you insecure, or it, finds, it brings somebody in your life that offers a level of security that you never thought you could have. It must be God, hallelujah. Mm. Only setting you up for your demise. Right. Right. 
So I've learned to stop judging by the circumstance and searching the spirit of it. Okay, okay. So when you pray, did you get a bad feeling? Sometimes no. Sometimes I just get, no, that's not me, leave it alone. And you know when you get those, no, that's not me, leave it alone, you are not trying to hear that. You try to turn the channel on God and tune into the foreign channels because you don't want to hear what's being said right here. But the mm -hmm. truth of the matter is life and death is in that. So when, when little brother said, they're talking about when the pastor gets a word from God from you, do you how many you come to and get a word? I would guarantee you that most people, and I would say 99.9, .9, don't come to me to get a word that goes against what they've already decided. Right, right. Absolutely. Mm. You come to get a word that goes along with what already has set well in your emotions. Mm. Yes? yes? Yes. I'm not picking on you. I'm the same way before God. I come before God in prayer and I'm going to say, please don't say this, please don't say this. Please don't say this. <laughs> <laughs> because I already know what I want him to agree with. Right. And when he does, it's like, yes, victory in prayer. <laughs> Lord is high above that. You know, before but when I come before him, as I'm coming, I'm getting this sense like, you know that the answer is going to be no to this, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't always consider that a victorious prayer session. <laughs> I consider well, I'm going to do what you said. I'm not going to fight what you said. I'm going to power. <laughs> and I'm not going to do it with a submitted heart. Mm. Now, that heart wants to be indulged. Let me, get, let me get you to your scripture. You're just saying, what's, can you get to the scripture? Yeah, let's, let me get you to your scripture. So we can get right in it now. We're going into the scripture here. So, what I want you to keep in mind is, just as we go into our scripture, seduction or being devoured being seduced is based on this. The enemy finding what you already feel challenged by and trying to make that which is destructive appear easy or good. We talked about it last week that in um in Star Wars, the whole yoga thing, right? When when he asked when Luke asked Yoda, is the dark side stronger? Is it not stronger? Easier to acquire. Right. Easier to acquire. Now, I guess I got to submit this before you. That bothered me because I want to know, again, me and God are friends. I have a friendship conversation with him. Is that literally true? And if so, why would sin be easier to acquire? How many of you want the answer to that question? Thank you. How many of you want the answer to that question? It's not easier to acquire. You just already know how to speak sin. Mm. Oh. Like I said, speaking the foreign language is not weird, it's not hard. It's just that that's not what you know. Right. You know how to speak sin. You mm. speak that language well. So, speaking righteousness means I have to unlearn something that I'm comfortable doing. So when God gives an instruction to be holy, you say, okay, how do I translate this which is unholy, and make it holy? And is there a way that I can take unholy and make it holy? No. I said one day when I was doing my studies, Abel Plata has opened the door. And God said to me, not to a person that only speaks Spanish. <laughs> did you get that or did I lose you? To a person that speaks Spanish, they don't know open the door. It's out of the class, out of the class. It doesn't mean open the door. It, you, it doesn't mean that. Did you, did you get it now? It only means the two because you know the other. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. You get it? I get it. To a person that knows to walk the righteousness, they don't say, okay, so is this sin and this right? They just know right. right. They don't know that language. Right, 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 right. So a person who walks a sin, they're always translating. <laughs> oh. Wow. 
We're always trying to see how one relates to the other. Are you getting this now? I feel like I'm like, like trying to like dig this in for the past 15 minutes. That's the point. We relate everything to our sinful nature. We identify it back. Oh, wow. So if I tell them off, that's bad. So the opposite of cussing them out and telling them off is just to stand there and just let them cuss me out and just take it. Just have to just be abused and just, and just hold my tongue and bite my lip to blood is running down my face. And just I just want to cuss you out so good. And to us, because we know the translation of the other way, that's what it means. Where a person wants to stay spiritual peace, and like, no, I refuse to take that spirit on me, so I don't feel the desire, nor do I feel offended. There's times when I'm in the spirit and not translating, I start to feel sorry for the person, wow. even as they're ranting, like, wow, your life really must be miserable that this is what spews out of you. That's good. And I can step back with compassion and say, I understand. I understand. And, and this happened to me in a very real situation when I went to a gas station with a bunch of people on the line. And I'm standing there asking a woman the question, and she yelled at me, You just need to wait. I'm like, Did this? <laughs> I chose not to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the curse. I didn't say it. And I stood there like, okay, we're going to do this. I'm not going to go, God. I'm asking for your anointing because I need to set this chip. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, trying to translate between the two. <laughs> how, how do I cuss her out in a holy way? <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a way to do this. Oh my God. I'm so guilty of that. I get a lot of takers on this. I'm so guilty of that. And as I was sitting there searching my spirit, somebody say searching my spirit. Searching my spirit. Everybody here knows how to search your spirit. You know you decide to take door B even though A is right in front of you. No, it's time to cuss. God <laughs> you, know, you, you know, you know you go with B, right? As I was sitting there searching out the doors, God said to me, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to do what's right. And when I said that on the inside, all of a sudden, the peace came over me. I waited till she finished doing what she was doing. And when she came back over me, I said, did you just yell at me and tell me to wait? And everybody on the line was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> to choose the nature of how I would respond. 
Amen. by my flesh or by my spirit. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 9. <clears throat> Let me know when you're there. I still have pages and stuff, so I'm going to give you Let me see what version I'm going to get out of because I'm going to go with my <clears throat> Okay. Starting at verse 1, it says, Wisdom has built her house, she has set up seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed it with wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants and she calls. From the highest points of the city, let all that are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, <laughs> she says, I mean, why? She says, come and eat my food. And drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you shall live. Walk in the way of insight. Say, walk, walk, walk in the way, in the way of, insight. of insight. You respond in English because you don't have insight into the other language. You respond in sin because you sometimes don't have the insight into the alternative. Is this helping somebody? Yeah. Purity is an alternative. Wisdom is an alternative. alternative. Holiness is an alternative. It's not a behavior. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's a language you speak. Right. It's the language God speaks. Amen. You get it? Yes. So it's not how good you behave. Right. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. It's a state of a heart in which you function out of. Right. That comes from spending time with God. You, if I didn't know God, and before I knew God, I didn't have the time to stop and think, how should I respond? There was one response. She might have got slapped. <laughs> that was the only response I had. I didn't have anything in my toolbox. No, you wouldn't slap her. The old me would have slapped her. <laughs> <laughs> I would slap my woman, but I slapped somebody else and they got out of line. <laughs> that was just my fault. That's where I came from. I'll check your chip, I'll check it for you. That's where I came from. I mean, I was always a pastor. I wasn't even always a Christian. I just want you to know that. I was raised in the streets, and this is what we did. Now, I had the option. Because I knew another language. Right, right. And if I didn't know it fluently, I was still learning it enough to have some kind of conversation. Well, that's good. So now when I hear people speak in Spanish, I stop, you know, not, not butting in if they're talking and they're talking around me and it's an open conversation. To hear and try to fill out the words and pick up the words I know and go, did you just say this? And they go close and then they'll correct me. And, but I have enough of that understanding now that I can I can glean and I can grab words and I can start to assimilate them into a conversation. Right. Now, it's a weird thing. As I've been studying with the program I've been studying, I find out that I read Spanish better than I can speak it. <laughs> I have a lot of Spanish people who me say, you can read it? I'm like, well, the way I'm learning, I'm it's reading. So yeah, I, I can... If, if you say it, it may go back, all the words blur together as one long thing. You might have heard that, but I don't say. But if I see it on paper, I can read it, I can tell you what it's saying. Right. Now, that's still, for me, an introduction into the language. Right. Right. You're not listening to me. Right. You read the word. Mm -hmm. Mm. I just pray and talk to God. But do you read the word? So you just speak in phrases that you learn and you rehearse, but you don't understand the roots of the language. Mm. Wow. wow. The hardest thing for me, like with Spanish, was that 
all the 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 the, 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 the S's and the O's on the words, and, and you have five ways to say one word. If I want to say read, I'm gonna say and it's Lee and Len and and, and you know it's, it's mm -hmm. too, so many. This is all, if it's female reading or man reading, and, and it's like, oh come on, this is one word. <laughs> I thought drink is better. It's not gonna be better and better malt and better malt. It's, it's too many. This is true. <laughs> about the languages and the different words, yes? yes. 
Mm-hmm. You're covered by how that word does not mean that to Spanish people, but they don't even know the word, the phrase open the door, right? A person does not speak English at all, correct? Right. Then, when Adam was created, he was not created to physically die. Correct. Correct. Did you know that? Right. He would have never died. Even the proof of that is in this. Even after he broke God's commandment, he still lived 900 something years. Find me somebody living 900 years now. <laughs> Death was so far and even to his natural body that the phrase took 900 years to kick in. <laughs> <laughs> now, take this in mind. The years got shorter when, when it went on and the man kept falling and God said, I will not tarry with man forever. And then he gave the limit to how many years he would live and he broke it down to 80. 80 plus. He said a limit, a minimum of 80. So if you get yanked out here before 80, you're being cheated. But that's a whole different message. We'll do that another time. And I don't mean leaving here sick and decrepit and falling apart. That's not God's plan for you. Amen. But because you don't know any better, Right, right. My wife showed me a picture of a couple that was 105 and 108 and yeah. something, and she showed. She said, "Look at it." I said, "I ain't, I ain't believing for that. I don't want to live that long. I'm sorry. Nah, I'm, <laughs> I do my 80, whatever, whatever. God, I'm good. If I do 80, I'm good. Hey, I don't even want to. I don't even care about 80. Truth be speaking, I ain't got no death wish. Don't get me wrong, but." I've read enough about the kingdom and saw enough in the Bible to know that I'm ready to go in there, but the Lord opens the door. <laughs> it's a place better than this. I'm good. I'm, I'm not good. I've learned enough between this world and that world to know that that was better. I'm out. You can pray and fast and do whatever you want. I'm out. <laughs> now, let me go back to my point. What? I need you just to just kind of put yourself in a state for a minute. What must it have been like for Adam and Eve to hear the phrase, you will surely die, when before then they had never even heard of that? Wow. Are you thinking, are you getting it now? When he said, you know, the day you eat of this, you should surely die. It was like, we're going to be buried, we're going to have tombs, what are we going to have on our tombstone? They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't have this concept. It was new to them. The whole, the whole situation with Noah, when Noah was going around saying to the people, it's going to rain. It's going to be a flood. Right. And, and maybe this is far to some of you, but let me help you out. Before then, there had been no rain. Right. You mean there had been no rain? The Bible clearly says in Genesis that the dew came up from under the ground and watered the plants every day. Water falling from the sky wasn't something they knew. Right. 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 So he's standing there saying, You're going to die. And they're like, And I'm sure they had to know that death meant separation from him and not laying down and physically dying. Mm. They understood death as a separation. Right. Right. Got it? Yes. So let's get back to this again. Leave your simple ways and you shall live. We're not talking about physically dying. We're talking about you will, if you keep your simple ways, you will die. There will be a separation from God. Your ability to hear will get duller dull, dull and duller. You, you seek God for direction and it will be hard to find. You try to put your hands to things and the prosperity won't be on it. That's death. Yes. Right. Yes. And you say my life is like that now, Pastor. Well, then we got a problem because you're simple. Right. <laughs> and he said, "Leave your simple ways, and you live." And I know it's telling the truth because it goes right to say, "Walk in the way of insight." What is insight? Knowledge. Come on, live wisdom, knowledge, understanding. What is insight? Hmm? Okay, I'm not I'm not arguing any of those. But what is insight? There you go. 
The ability is being able to look inward, being able to look into something deeper than what's on the surface. Insight is not just wisdom. You okay. can have wisdom. I have wisdom of how a car works. But I don't have insight to how to fix it. Okay. You, you got it? Yeah. Insight is the ability that goes beyond the surface ability. Okay. Yeah. You know if you get up in the morning, you put your foot on the floor, you're supposed to stand up, but you don't know how. You don't have insights unless you've been a medical student. You don't know how that works. And most of us don't even care. If we put it on the floor, it works. That's what we care about. <laughs> but the scripture says you will gain insight if you walk away from the simple. Look, about, look at somebody and say, I'm not simple anymore. I'm not simple anymore. I don't want to live in the simple. Come on, do I have any takers? Yes. I don't want to live in the simple. I don't want to feel like I'm living in this world existing just like everybody that don't know God. He's promising me that there's an insight, that there's a place, that there's a realm that I can live and function in that goes beyond what everybody every day does. There's something deeper. Somebody say there's something deeper. Something deeper. You want it? Yes. yes. That's what we're talking about in this season. That there's a light that goes beyond the one we've accepted. The one that's been pulled over our eyes, as they said in the Matrix. Mm. That's true. I love that movie for that. Because he was saying, no, you're, you're living in a dream world, Leo. Like, this world that you accept has its limitations. There's a real world outside of this world. Right, right. You can control matter and things. And I, and I said, that's deep. I see you you get into movies and stuff now. Okay, let, let's see. So Jesus turned water into wine, he walked on water, he raised the dead, he gave the, the, the blind their sight. You say, Yeah, that was a miracle, right? That was a miracle, right? That was a miracle, yeah, right? Is it a miracle, right? What's a miracle to Jesus? <laughs> That's no That's a miracle. That's to you is a miracle. So Jesus, he's like, yeah. We do that all the time here. That's how we get down up here. You got to say, people, everything is right. Amen. Right? That's the way it is. I can't picture Jesus saying, God, did you see what I just did? Wow! No, this is what he does. This is the way he lives. There's no food. We should send the people home. That's what they said, right? Yeah. Just send the people home. Jesus is getting late. There's no food. Jesus said, you can't send them home. They'll faint in the way unless you give them what they need. That's a whole message right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, just wait in the morning. Jesus said, no, we can't send them home. We can't send them home lacking. They'll faint in their walk. Yeah. I can't send my people away without their prayer answers. They'll faint. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, when I, that's why my prayers get answered like this. Because I know God won't make me faint. <laughs> Amen. He may tell me we need to fix some things in you so we, I can get that patch to you. I need you in the right place so when UPS come, they come to the right door and you got somewhere else. Amen. Right. You understand? Yeah. You understand? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I expect, and those of you who work close around me know, I expect. We need to pray, we need to pray. Okay, what are we praying for? We need to do this, we need to pray that. Okay, so what are we praying for? Okay, pray, Father, thank you. We need this. I know that you heard me. I love you and I appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. If there's anything in me I need to check, let me know. Amen. Lord. We're done. But we know we gotta really pray. I'm like, no, you do that. <laughs> Jesus didn't pray like that. I said last week, Jesus, one of the most powerful things Jesus ever did was just two sentences. For, to raise a man from the dead. Lord, I thank you that you've heard me. Lazarus, come forth. That was his whole prayer. He didn't get the whole prayer grouped together in community. <laughs> <laughs> and have crackers and wine and sit around and fast and speak in tongues for five hours. Two days. No, he didn't time. Lord, Lord, I thank you that you heard me. Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> Well, I told you about when I went to Africa, 
and then they had to cast that. That I had my real first cast a demon out experience, and I did all the you know the blinds that get you and all the junk that pretends to work here in America. And them demons like, look, they will kill you. You in our land. You better come better than that. And when I got before God, God said to me, just lay down all that junk and just say what I tell you to say. And I said one thing, and she got here. Delivered. Totally the demon came out. Just out. And it wasn't like, like I said, you see here, when you, you know there when the demon comes out. You know. And I'm going to tell you something. The realm of the power of God is so underutilized by the church that we become a joke. We're just a religious group. Yeah. There's no signs. There's no wonders. There's nothing about you that makes people awe and want to have what you have because you're trying to figure out how to translate. Wow. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to speak their language. Gospel groups got to figure out how to make record sound much as like blurred lines as possible. Oh, okay. That was a hit. Oh, no. I'm not to make comments. That's not my best. Let me just get back over here. Verse 7. Whoever corrects a, mark a marker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. They want those two verses right there should have saved somebody's life. How many of you go around trying to correct people, make them believe there's a God when they just don't and don't want to? Right. And you get cussed out and insulted. It says, don't bother people, leave them alone. It just says right there. This is a simple way. How many of you know what an internet troll is? An internet troll. Well, you know since yesterday. Only two people in the room. Lindsay, I told you yesterday. Oh, you know, Michael knows the troll. A troll is a person who gets on the page and it'll be about a birthday cake and they'll just write, all their words are stupid. And then everybody gets upset and it becomes oh. a big fight. And, and, and they're just doing it Taking just to incite a, a, a negative conversation. It has nothing to do with the topic at hand. And all of a sudden, the whole topic goes from how to bake a cake to why white people better than black people. And how could you say that? Your mother's the hand word is your, you know, and it just, it just, it just, it just fades into just stupidity. Mm -hmm. And they call those people trolls. Mm -hmm. And there are people out, you know, I've read, you know, strings where the people are going back and forth. And the person, after letting them go back and forth for two or three days, back and forth. The person said, look, I'm just here trolling. You don't want to decide to jump in. They don't let you know. I'm just here. I'm, I did this just so I can have this response. Wow. Mm. It's crazy. Satan's a troll. He has a troll task force. He has a whole demon force of trolls. And they go out and they mock you in your faith and what you believe. And the scripture says, if you correct the marker, you invite it, so. Dang, it got quiet. I think that was pretty straightforward. Stop trying to make everybody understand what you understand. Okay. <laughs> when I'm supposed to share Jesus with people, share with your lifestyle. They see it in your lifestyle, and they see God work for you. They'll come here. Right. right. Amen. <laughs> if somebody's wicked and you rebuke them, you're going to get abuse. Verse 8, do not rebuke a marker, or they will hate you. Ready for this? Yeah. Rebuke the wise, and they will love you. Instruct the wise, and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous, the righteous and they will add to their learning. So I'm out of time, so here's we're going to bring that home. How many of you realize that you spend too much time on people that don't want to learn? <laughs> too much time. I've been trying to invite them. I keep trying to invite them. Okay, live it. They'll, they'll come for your lifestyle. Right. Right. Stop trying to invite them. Just live it. Right. Amen. Just live it. Just live it. Right. They'll see something on you that they want. So he said, you're being simple 
to engage yourself with a person who's wicked. People who want the truth receive the truth. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. right. If you got to tie down all kinds of words to get to them, leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Leave it alone. Why? I can't end it without giving you why. Because all of that is designed by the enemy to yeah. keep you in that passionate place where you're always at odds and striving. Yeah. Is to keep you out of that kingdom life where you walk into peace, right. dispassionate, not not overly sensitive to all the stimuli of this world. Right, right, right. Say, there's a greater place. There's, there's a, a greater, greater place. place. I've decided. I've decided. I will have it. I will have it. Amen. 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 Stand with me just for a minute. And I just feel like I'm just getting started. But there's so much stuff. Did you learn something? Wave your hand at me. It's good stuff. It's, it's, it, it, it's the stuff that I wish a lot of people had taught me when I was walking around trying to pretend to be a Christian. <laughs> Doing the church rules so I could fit in as a Christian. Somebody other than me know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I, I, I kept saying, it's got to be better than this. I used to say things, some of you probably said it, I felt like I was doing better before I knew Jesus. <laughs> One day I said that to God, God, I, I feel like I was, okay, yeah, I mean, I've been going to hell, but I was doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. said, because you don't know my ways. Yes. All right. You learn to operate out of my system. All the promises of God. Amen. 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 I said, I don't, I don't be big on anything. Anything, he said, if you pray and you don't have it, he said, because your spirit is right. A lot of times we pray and don't even believe it, not even expect it, we see what we pray for. Mm -hmm. You're praying with a wish, hoping that God feels sorry for you and give it to you, but you're not expecting it. And God responds to faith, not to desperation. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. I, I threw that in. I just threw that in. That was just a gift. That was a bonus. <laughs> God, all those desperate prayers you pray that you think move God, they don't move God. God responds to faith. Scripture says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. He is not moved by your tears. He's moved by your faith. Amen. Right, Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. I love that. So I stopped coming to him desperate. Because I realized all that did was make me more desperate. <laughs> so this week, just take some time. Search yourself out where you're overly passionate. Pray about what words and phrases make you react negatively and you have no control of the truth. No get the strings. Pray about that because you may not think that this is important, but let me tell you, no matter how strong you think you're standing, if the devil can throw a phrase at you that throws you off, do you understand it's a diversion to get you away from what God is doing? Yes. Do you understand that everything yes. he does is something to get your eye off the prize? Do you understand that the devil can't yes. not the devil attack you the rest of my blood? The devil can't devil can't take your stuff. He can only make you come out of it. That's right. That's right. That's right. He can blind you to the truth that you take your eye off the prize. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to you, don't take this instruction this week lightly. Ask God, God, show me all the triggers. Show me all the buttons that he keeps pushing that makes me get off track. Show me the ways he keeps seducing me and getting me out of the way that you call me. Jesus. I, have you ever felt like you're getting right there almost to what you're supposed to get and then something just goes wrong? Then because Satan knows the triggers. He knows how to get your eyes off the prize because he's done it to you a million times and you respond the same way every time. Mm. Yes. He doesn't know what you're going to do until you do it. Right. Or until you say it. A lot of times you keep your big mouth shut, the devil won't know if he got you or not. <laughs> don't even speak it out loud. I'm so worried. I'm so depressed. Just, just don't say it. This is how you doing? <laughs> Why are you just feeling better? I'm good. Like, no, you, you, you know, is everything okay? I'm good. Yeah. Oh, sympathy. Oh, I just need sympathy so much. The emotions. <laughs> just bathe in sympathy. I just need that sympathy. Emotions. We love when people understand. 
It's sin. It's sin. Why we just feed the atmosphere with all kinds of negativity with the devil's work? Yes. Did you learn something? Mm-hmm. Did you learn something? Yes. Did you learn something? Yes. It's real simple. But you gotta practice it. Because you learn in a foreign language. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you gotta practice it. Amen. You gotta practice it.